crap. How do you get this thing into neutral so you can push it? One of the fantastic features of the Aston Martin DB9s fitted with an automatic transmission is what Aston calls shift by wire. Essentially, there's no gear shift lever here. There's uh, push buttons on the dash where we can select park, reverse, neutral, and um, drive. Um, but here's the challenge. If you have an electronics issue where the electronics fail, or more commonly, if your battery's dead, how do you get your car out of park into neutral so you can be towed or push it out of the garage. Well, um, in most modern cars, down by the shift lever, there'd be like a little slot, a little override uh, mechanism, but there's nothing like that here. Well, the Aston engineers thought about it, but the solution's hidden, so let me show you how to do it. To start the process, I looked at an unusual place, the actual glove box owner's manual. And if you look in your index, you'll find a section on park override. And in here, Aston explains how to do it, so it might be uh, unique in your particular car, um, maybe if you have a Rapide or a Vantage. But uh, for the DB9, let me show you how to do it. All right, so to get started, the release is actually under the left-hand rear seat squab, so we need to get access back there. Not easy on a DB9, but uh, pull the release lever on the seat, flip it forward, and then Basically, the seat squab itself uh, is just held down on the front edge with Velcro here. So you just grip the underneath it and pull straight up on the front. And you'll see basically a big strip of Velcro here and then a piece here that actually the glue unstuck from the seat. So uh, taking it off. Basically reapply that to the seat squab for when we put it back in. Stick it back down. We can get this out of the way. And that reveals this area. So underneath here is the emergency park override lever. And the owner's manual says there should be some thumb screws here, knurled thumb screws that you can undo. Instead, there's these two slot head um, screws we need to undo. They've got a big slot in them, so I'm guessing they, they said, well, we don't have thumb screws, so, um, but you can use like a, a quarter or a pound coin or something and uh, get these loosened up. Because remember, you're supposedly doing this uh, stuck at the roadside or at a parking garage or someplace you can always use a, uh, an actual screwdriver. Maybe later models have uh, a thumb screw or knurled screw. And if yours does, please feel free to comment below and uh, maybe send me a picture of it so I can include it in the article. So there's no, these aren't super long. You can see it's coming loose. And there we go. <clears throat> so this part's tethered on. You can't lose it. I'll just set that aside. And now what you can see under here is this yellow bar push button and this little uh, release lever uh, ring. So you grab onto this and now before you pull on this uh, you need to make sure you've got the car stabilized. So before you flip the lever on the park brake override you need to make sure the car is level and won't roll away. So uh, you might want to use a wheel chalk to block the rear wheel somehow and be sure you've set the park brake. Now that we're sure we've got the car um, park brake set and the wheels blocked, uh, to release the park brake pull, we just pull up and that disengages uh, the parking brake at the transmission. Uh, so if we, um, uh, if we don't have the wheel that's blocked right now, I can actually so show you I can move the car, which is terrific. So now you can roll it out of the garage or work with the tow truck driver to get it loaded onto the flatbed. So when you're ready to uh, put the system back to normal, basically you need to do kind of a two-handed process. You need to pull on the lever a little bit more and then push the button 
in to release it. And it's not hard. And you want it to go all the way back down horizontal. You don't want to leave it part way up. That's bad. So just um, pull up a little bit so you can push the button in and then uh, put it all the way back down flat. Then it's just a process of putting your cover back in using your screwdriver and uh, tightening these back up and dropping the seat squab in. All right, so don't over tighten them because you're going to want to be able to loosen them with a coin. And putting back the seat squab is just tuck it back in, holding the front edge up, and then give it a good push down to get the Velcro engaged. Put your seat back and you're all finished up. Now, before I finish this video segment up, I want to talk about one more laughable idea. Um, every spring, there always seems to be one or two guys that post on the Facebook forums that say, help, I can't get my car to move out of the garage. And they've somehow put it in so close to the walls, they can't get the doors open wide, and they let the battery go flat. So the battery's dead. We're in the scenario where you can't get into the neutral. They want to somehow get the car to roll out, but they can't even get in enough to, since the battery's flat, they can't get the trunk release to work to get in to put the charger on. And they can't get in for some reason to get the hood to open. And they can't get in, get the door open far enough to get a battery in to do the battery service on the uh, right-hand side of the car. Which sounds crazy, but you know, I'm sure there's small garages in the UK. So I, I think you can do this with barely opening the driver's door. So uh, first off, you've got to use your key because uh, you know the, the door was electronically open with the fob. So use your key to open it. And if you've got to be able to at least get it open enough that you can be sitting here like this, but maybe you can. Then with one hand, you can get the seat release and move that forward with one hand you can get the seat squab up and out of the way. And I haven't even looked in the car yet to see what I'm doing. So now, while I'm still just jamming myself in, you got to do the, uh, the screws, which I believe will be possible. So fast forward time. All right, so with that out of the way, the car is safely blocked and park brake set. And if you pan back here, there we go. Now we can move the car carefully out of the garage if we need to. It's doable, but not a lot of fun. Hopefully you found this tip helpful. Down here you'll find a link to the article where I cover it. I'll probably have a page of the owner's manual that you can read that. Um, up here, you'll probably find whatever the uh, interesting and related videos are. If you like videos like this, please subscribe down here. And as always, I love to hear your comments. Please leave them down below. Thanks for watching.